2 Maccabees chapter 10, starting with verse 1. Now Maccabeus and his company, the Lord guiding them, recovered the temple and the city. All right, that's, that's what the Feast of Dedication comes from. That's where Hanukkah comes from. All right. But the altars, which the heathen had built in the open street and also the chapels, they pulled down and having cleansed the temple, they made another altar and striking stones. They took fire out of them and offered a sacrifice after two years and set forth incense and lights and shoe bread. When that was done, they fell flat down and besought the Lord that they might come no more into such troubles. But if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy and that they might not be delivered unto the blasphemous and barbarous nations. They said, look, let anything come upon us except being delivered to the heathen. Now, upon the same day that the strange profaned the temple, on the very same day it was cleansed again, even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is Castle. That's the ninth month, the ninth moon. It's around November time. That's why it's called November. Novum means nine, even though in the modern calendar, uh, what is it, 11? Yeah. Uh, but the people, even the people, the Romans who, who named the months, what they named them, uh, that is October, November, and December. Even those Romans knew that the beginning of the year was around March. All right. Now we just ab approached the beginning of the year this past uh, Sunday night, I believe. All right. And they kept the eight days with gladness, as in the Feast of the Tabernacles, eight days. Uh, remembering that no, not long before they had held the Feast of the Tabernacles, when as they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts, right? So uh, Tabernacles is, uh, what is it, two months, two months before Hanukkah, thereabout. Therefore, they bear branches and fair bows and palms also and sang psalms unto him that had given them good success in cleansing his palace. So um, maybe you've seen in, in like a movie or whatever where uh, in ancient times, whenever people would celebrate, they would bring the palm branches. They would bring the the uh, the uh, like thin branches from trees and do like a little dance with them. Right. Um, it's similar to how, I guess it would be like Asians do like a, uh, like a fan dance or whatever. It's similar to that. That's, uh, one, one, uh, one means or one way uh, of celebrating, of dancing. All right. They ordained also by common statute and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. Right. So again, that's where Hanukkah came from. That's where the Feast of Dedication came from. And this was the end of Antiochus called Epiphany. So around that same time as the Feast of the Dedication happened, as the Hanukkah happened, Antiochus died. All right. The same one who caused the decree to profane the temple in the first place. Around the same time the temple was cleansed, he died. All right. Now, now, excuse me, now will we declare the acts of Antiochus Eupater. All right, so that would be the son of Antiochus Epiphanes, Eupater, who was the son of this wicked man, gathering briefly the calamities of the wars. So when he was come to the crown, he set one Lysias over the affairs of his realm and appointed him his chief governor of Silo, Syria and Phoenice. For Ptolemaeus, that was called Macron, choosing rather to do justice unto the Jews for the wrong that had been done unto them endeavored to keep uh, uh, endeavored to continue peace with them and see this is what you see you see people going back and forth as far as uh that's what we're going to read at, at more in first maccabees than in second maccabees but people going back and forth as far as their uh allies whether it be the greeks allying themselves with the greeks or the greeks allying themselves with the jews it, and there's different sects uh sects uh, S E C T S. There's different sects of the Greeks, different factions of the Greeks rising up against each other. And then one may, may ally themselves with, with Judas Maccabeus and his brethren, or, or later Jonathan and, and Simon. Um, 
and then another might come and and uh usurp them in some sort of way and that's that's what you see it's real uh medieval it's real reminiscent of the the wicked northern kingdom of israel how the how these greeks got down there, there was no stability in their kingdom all right the only alliance that the jews formed or, or you know that john that judas jonathan and simon formed uh with any of these nations the only one that really persisted is their alliance with the romans and we'll get into that uh in the next couple of weeks not not this week but we'll get into it maybe next week but um ptolemaeus this ptolemaeus specifically because there were many ptolemaeuses uh this, that was a whole lineage this is ptolemaeus macron he made an alliance that he's he's trying to stick to with, with the jews whereupon being accused of the king's friends before you paid her and called traitor at every word because he had left cyprus that philometer had committed unto him and departed to antiochus epiphanes and seeing that he was in no honorable place he was so discouraged that he poisoned himself and died you see that right there so that uh ptolemaeus macron he did not persist long all right even though he was an ally to the jews the greeks hated him so uh he ended up killing himself but when gorgias was governor of the uh, of the holds he hired soldiers and nourished war continually with the jews you see that right there so one of the the allies of the jews died and now here comes this other enemy all right and Therewithal, the Idumeans, having gotten into their hands the most commodious holds, kept the Jews occupied, and receiving those that were banished from Jerusalem, they went about to nourish war. You see that right there, those, those wicked Idumeans. Idumea is a Greek and Roman word for Edom, and this is specifically talking about the Edomites in Sierra, all right? Then they that were with Maccabeus made supplication and besought God that he would be their helper. And so they ran with violence upon the stronghold of the Idumeans and assaulting them. Come on. Now, I didn't mean to click on it and assaulting them strongly. They won the hold and kept off all that fought upon the wall and slew all that fell into their hands and killed no fewer than 20,000. You see right there, 20,000. They killed 20,000 of these wicked Edomites. And because certain who were no less than 9,000 were fled together into two very strong castles, having all manner of things convenient to sustain the siege, Maccabeus left Simon and Joseph and Zacharias also, and them that were with him who were enough to besiege them and departed himself unto those places which more needed his help. And uh, we, we talked about this a bit last week, but, but part of being a good leader is knowing who to leave in charge of things. And Judas w was no stranger to that. He would say, okay, Jonathan, you go over here. Simon, you go over here. Hey, I need y'all to watch this over here while I go back and I help these people over here. Like he, he, he knew how to designate uh, other leaders. All right. Now, they that were with Simon, being led with covetousness, were persuaded for money through certain of those that were in the castle and took 70,000 drams and let some of them escape. But when it was told Maccabeus what was done, he called the governors of the people together and accused those men that they had sold their brethren for money and set their enemies free to fight against them. You see that right there? So Maccabeus said, look, I got to deal with these folks. All right. I got to deal with these folks. <laughs> So he slew those that were found traitors and immediately took the two castles. You see that right there? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Mm. Dang, dang. So that, that was uh, those traitors turning on Simon in, in, uh, in, in the castles of Idumea. You had traitors that turned on Simon. So when Mac Maccabeus found this out, hey, he came through. He took those two castles. And having good success with his weapons and all, and all things he took in hand, he slew in the two holds more than 20,000. So that's another 20,000. So initially, the 20,000 that they killed in Idumea led 9,000 to flee into the castles, right? And there were already people in the castles, obviously. So then they took, or rather after the traitors let the people escape judas came through boom another twenty thousand dead 
Now Timotheus, whom the Jews had overcome before, when he had gathered a great multitude of foreign forces and horses out of Asia, not a few, came as though he would take Jewry by force of arms, right? Jewry in this case meaning Judea, all right? But, uh, so yeah, Timotheus already lost the battle before. So he just came with these horses, uh, we said out of Asia, it's talking about like Turkey, all right? So he went and got these horses from Turkey, thinking he's going to do something now. But when he drew near, they that were with Maccabeus turned themselves to pray unto God and sprinkled earth upon their heads and girded their loins with sackcloth. Right. So that's a sign of a uh, mourning. That's a sign of humility. In ancient times, we, we've discussed this before and fell down at the foot of the altar and besought him to be merciful to them and to be an enemy to their enemies and an adversary to their adversaries as the law declareth right so you can read about it that uh i believe that one's in uh leviticus 26 where, where god says if if we keep his commandments he will be an enemy to our enemy and adversary to our ad adversaries uh the same blessings though as deuteronomy 28 all right so after the prayer they took their weapons and went on further from the city. And when they drew near to their enemies, they kept by themselves. Now the sun being nearly risen, they joined both together, the one part having together with their virtue, their refuge, also unto the Lord for a pledge of their success and victory, the other side making their rage leader of their battle. Right. So you have the uh, this this whole story of the uh, of Judas Maccabeus and his family it versus the Greeks is literally quite literally a story of good versus evil. Like this, this, that's, that's really what this is story of righteousness versus wickedness story of God's people versus God's enemies. All right. And as we just read an enemy, they prayed that God would be, uh, an enemy to their enemies. Right. Um, so that, that's what we, that's what you see here in this verse that you have, Maccabe the Maccabean stronghold, the Maccabean forces, right? Uh, the good fighting, the good fight, being driven by uh, holiness unto the unto the Lord, and then the other side, driven by their rage and their hatred, their perpetual hatred. All right, but when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five, five comely men upon horses with bridles of gold and two of them led the jews you see right there so you got five angels right here appeared in the battle and two of them were leading the jews in the battle and took maccabeus betwixt them and covered him on every side <laughs> and covered him on every side weapons right we weapons on every side of him and kept him safe but shot arrows and lightnings against the enemies so that being confounded with blindness and full of trouble they were killed you see it right there so they didn't know what happened they just saw <laughs> they can't even see what's going on it's too bright they're like ah what's happening boom struck by lightning just like crazy man just like crazy stuff going on here and there were slain of footmen twenty thousand five hundred and 600 horsemen all right so uh yeah man this, this is a uh, this is nuts because it was tw it didn't even say that was all of them but it's 20,500 men footmen that is and you had 600 horsemen die in that battle as for Timotheus himself he fled into a very strong hold called Gara where Tereus was governor but they that were with Maccabeus laid siege against the fortress courageously four days and they that were within, trusting to the strength of the place, blasphemed exceedingly and uttered, uttered wicked words, right? So they'd be like, you ain't never going to get up here, right? And they're like cursing them out and stuff. Like, you ain't never going to get up here. Your God ain't with you. Your God ain't this, you know, blah, 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 this and that. Right? Just like cursing them out, cursing out God. Um, let's see. Nevertheless, verse 35. Nevertheless, upon the fifth day, uh, early, so like early in the morning, 20 young men of Maccabeus company inflamed with anger because of the blasphemies assaulted the wall manly and with a fierce courage killed all that they met with all right. Destroyed this, this, uh, what is this? This hold, this, uh, fortress destroyed this fortress. 
others likewise ascending after them whilst they were busied with them that were with them burnt the towers and kindling fires burnt the blasphemers alive and others broke open the gates and having received in the rest of the army took the city you see it right there so taking these cities man that the heathen who fighting against god's army fighting against god's people doing all this wickedness to god's people they're trying to run to these cities for refuge and there's like no we're not we're not having it we're going to take the city if you run into a city we're going to take it and kill timotheus that was hid in a certain pit and Tereus his brother with apolophanes apolophanes we'll say when this was done they praised the lord with psalms and thanksgiving who had done so great things for israel and given them the victory all right so um yeah so we will read this here in chapter 11 and then we'll jump back over to first maccabees because uh there's something i want to get to in first maccabees this week um and then everything after probably everything after next week will be first maccabees as well because i want to finish up uh second maccabees next week talking about uh the day of the destruction of nicanor but um let's go ahead and read this here in chapter 11 not long after not long after this lysias the king's protector and cousin who also managed the affairs took sore displeasures for the things that were done and when he had gathered about uh, four score thousand as eighty thousand with all the horsemen he came against the jews thinking to make the city and habitation of the gentiles right so this is what you see repeatedly by the greeks continuously again and again and again trying to come take jerusalem because they know that that's the holy city all right that's no they know that's where uh the the god of the jews is is in his temple in jerusalem all right let's see and to make a gain of the temple as of the other chapels of the heathen and to set the high priesthood to sail every year right turn it into a political position that people can run for all right you know what they said you got to have at least 90 million dollars to be president that's what they say they say that's how, that's how much it costs all right um let's see Verse 4, not at all considering the power of God, but puffed up with his ten thousands of footmen and his thousands of horsemen and his fourscore elephants, right? So he got 80 elephants, 80 elephants. So he came to Judea and drew near to Bethsura, which was a strong town, but distant from Jerusalem, about five furlongs, and he laid sore siege unto it. All right. Right, Bethsura, not not too, not close to Jerusalem, but um, Bethsura is still a city of Judah. Now, when they that were with Maccabeus heard that he besieged the holds, they and all the people with lamentation and tears besought the Lord that he would send a good angel to deliver Israel. Then Maccabeus himself, first of all, took weapons, exhorting the other that they would jeopard themselves together with him to help their brethren. So they went forth together with a willing mind. You see that right there? So first of all, they prayed unto the Lord, right? They prayed unto the Lord that he would send an angel. But did they just uh, sit back and say, oh, no, God's got it. God will take care of it. No. They said, we prayed to the Lord. We have faith that he's going to do something about it. But now let's show our works. Let's show what we believe, that God will deliver the heathen into our hands. All right. With a willing mind. And as they were at Jerusalem, there appeared before them on horseback, one in white clothing, shaking his armor of gold. Then they praised the merciful God altogether and took heart in so much that they were ready not only to fight with men, but with most cruel beasts and to pierce through walls of iron. Right. So they saw a vision of an angel. Then they marched forward in their armor, having a helper from heaven, for the Lord was merciful unto them. And giving a charge upon their enemies like lions, they slew 11,000 footmen and 1,600 horsemen and put all the other to flight. You see that right there? Dang. 11,000. Killed 11,000 men on the ground 
and 1,600 people that was on horses. And everybody else ran. Many of them also being wounded escaped naked, and Lysias himself fled away shamefully and so escaped. Who, as who as he was a man of understanding casting with himself what loss he had had and considering that the hebrews could not be overcome because the almighty god helped them he sent unto them so this is lysias like look i just brought all my forces y'all cannot be defeated your god is a true god he fights for you and persuaded them to agree to all reasonable conditions and promised that he would persuade the king that he must needs be a friend unto them He's like, look, we can't fight them. We have to strike up a deal. We have to form an alliance with them. They can't be beaten. Not when they're fighting with God on their side. They cannot be beaten. Then Maccabeus consented to all that Lysias desired, being careful of the common good. And whatsoever Maccabeus wrote unto Lysias concerning the Jews, the king granted it. For there were letters written unto the Jews from Lysias to this effect. Lysias unto the people of the Jews sendeth greeting. John and Absalom, who were sent from you, delivered me the petition subscribed and made request for the performance of the, con of the contents thereof. Therefore, what things soever were meet to be reported to the king, I have declared them, and he hath granted as much as might be. And if then you will keep yourselves loyal to the state... Hereafter also will I endeavor to be a means of your good. But of the particulars I have given order both to these and the other that came from me to commune with you. Fare ye well. The hundred and eight and fortieth year, the four and twentieth day of the month, uh, Dios Corinthians. I do not know which month that is. I'm not even going to lie to you. These Greek months, I don't know. I don't know what the Greek calendar was like back then. All right. But we do know this is the same year, the same year of the uh, dedication, 148th year. Now the king's letter contained these words, King Antiochus unto his brother Lysias sendeth greeting. Since our father is translated unto the gods, our will is that they that are in our realm live quietly, that everyone may attend upon his own affairs. You see that right there? So even... Well, we talked about the wicked man that Antiochus Epiphanes was, and Eupater wasn't much better, but he was better as far as like how he, he dealt with people. All right. He wasn't as arrogant as his father, I, I would say. Um, he, he was willing to make deals, was willing to, to, you know, make peace. All right. We understand also that the Jews would not consent to our father for to be brought unto the custom of the Gentiles, but had rather keep their own manner of living. For the watch cause, or excuse me, for the which cause they require of us that we should suffer them to live after their own laws. Wherefore, our mind is that this nation shall be in rest. And we have determined to restore them their temple, that they may live according to the customs of their, for, of their forefathers. Right? So, obviously, with... Uh, you paid her writing this. He's not going to say, look, they whipped our ass so bad. We have to strike a deal with them. But that's exactly what happened. Thou shalt do well, therefore, to send unto them and grant them peace, that when they are certified of our mind, they may be of good comfort and ever go cheerfully about their own affairs. And the letter of the king unto the nation of the Jews was after this manner. King Antiochus sendeth greeting unto the council and the rest of the Jews. If ye farewell, we have our desire we are also in good health. Menelaus declared unto us that your desire was to return home and to follow your own business. Wherefore, they that will depart shall have safe conduct till the 30th day of Xanthicus with security. And the Jews shall use their own kind of meats and laws as before, and none of them any manner of and, and none of them any manner of ways shall be molested for things ignorantly done. I have sent also Menelaus that he may comfort you. Fare you well in the 148th year in the 15th day of the month Xanthicus. So yeah, this is probably going on the 12th month because we know that uh, Caslu uh, is the 9th month. Um, so you get into uh, the month of Dios Corinthians and uh, Xanthicus. That's probably like the 11th and 12th month if I had to guess. But again, I'm not, not quite sure on 
that all right but we see here that finally after years and years of fighting that the jews the uh specifically because of uh the maccabean family and what they did can have peace all right they can stay within the land again and keep the laws they're not being forced to do what the greeks want them to do anymore thank god all praises to the most high the romans also sent unto them a letter containing these words uh what does it say quintus mimius and titus manlius ambassadors of the romans send greeting unto the people of the jews whatsoever Lysias the king's cousin hath granted therewith we also are well pleased right so the Romans are like look hey uh, we'll, we'll keep peace with you as well we don't uh, want to start nothing either alright uh, but touching those things as he judged to be referred to the king after ye have advised thereof send one forthwith that we may declare as it is convenient for you for we are now going to Antioch they said look we would like to meet with you please send an ambassador so that we can meet with him therefore send some with speed that we may know what is your mind farewell this hundred and uh, 48th year the 15th day of the month Xanthicus alright so this allegiance with the Romans does uh, go places alright and, and uh, again we'll read more about that uh, next week I suppose um, no no it won't be next week it'll be week after next but I do want to uh, read this here in 1st Maccabee 6 We've read the first part about the death of Antiochus, um, but I want to get into the next bit. Um, no, this first might be seven. My bad. First might be six is where we left off. All right, first might be six, starting with which verse? Verse. Right. So Antiochus died in uh, verse 13 or rather he died in the 149th year excuse me excuse me excuse me but he he, he handed over his uh throne his uh kingdom uh to philip before he died and that philip should raise up his son you paid her all right so let's start with 17. now in lysias because this is uh this is essentially what we just read about that great army that was defeated uh, uh, Lysias and his army with all the elephants and stuff but I want to get into some details here in 1st Maccabees because there's something important that 2nd that Maccabees kind of glossed over um, yeah now when Lysias knew that the king was dead he set up Antiochus his son whom he had brought up being young to reign in his stead in his name called he uh, he called you Pater about this uh, about this time they that were in the uh, excuse me about this time they that were in the tower shut up the Israelites round about the sanctuary and sought always their hurt and the strengthening of the heathen wherefore Judas purposing to destroy them called all the people together to besiege them right so this is uh, I believe the same as what we we're reading about the uh, about the Idumeans all right so they came together and besieged them in the hundred and 50th year and he made uh, mounts for shot against them and other engines Howbeit, certain of them that were besieged got forth unto whom some ungodly men of Israel joined themselves right that's, that's the betrayers of Simon as we were reading and they went into the king and said how long will it be ere thou execute judgment and avenge our brethren we have been willing to serve thy father and to do as he would have us and to obey his commandments for which cause they of our nation besieged the tower and are alienated from us moreover as many uh, moreover as many of us as they could light on they slew and spoiled our inheritance she said that right there so like look we're just trying to be like the greeks and, and now they're killing us now they're besieging us not to mention uh of course they are not mentioning all their blasphemies all their uh wickedness against god and their brethren glossing over all of that just so they can be like, run, uh, run to the Greeks, please, please save us from these righteous men. All right. Uh, neither have they stretched out their hand against us only, but also against their borders. They said, look, they're even encroaching on your land. And behold, this day are they besieging the tower at Jerusalem. Uh, oh, excuse me. This was at Jerusalem. This wasn't in Idumea. 
to take it, the sanctuary also, and Betsura have they fortified? All right, so uh, this is the same as uh, as Lysias though, coming down to Betsura. Wherefore, if thou dost not prevent them quickly, they will do the greater things than these. Neither shalt thou be able to rule them. Now, when the king heard this, he was angry and gathered together all his friends and the captains of his army and those that had charge of the horse. There came also unto him from other kingdoms and from isles of the sea, bands of hired soldiers, right? So mercenaries. So that the number of his army was a hundred thousand footmen and 20,000 horsemen. And it said two and 30 elephants exercised in battle, 32 elephants. These went through Idumea and pinched a pitched against Betsura, which they assaulted many days, making engines of war, but they of Betsura came out and burned them with fire and fought valiantly, right? So the people at Betsura were not uh were not pushovers, all right? They may not have been uh Maccabeus's troop as far as uh in their might and valor, but they were still fort they were still uh valiant, valiant men, valiant people fighting, all right? Upon this, Judas removed from the tower and pitched in Bat-Zacharias over against the king's camp. Then the king, rising very early, marched fiercely with his hosts toward Bat-Zacharias, where his armies made them ready to battle and sounded the trumpets. And to the end, they might provoke the elephants to fight. They showed them the blood of grapes and mulberries. All right, so they, uh, you know, uh, like what you, uh, like dangle the carrot. I don't know if you've ever seen something about that. Dangle the carrot in front of the horse to get it to like move faster. That's what they're doing with these elephants with the, uh, what is that, grapes and mulberries? Yeah. Moreover, they divided the beasts among the armies, and for every elephant they appointed a thousand men armed with coats of mail and with helmets of brass on their heads. And besides this, for every beast were ordained 500 horsemen of the best. You see that right there? So, the when it talks about having all these elephants, they didn't march all these elephants together. They split these elephants up to be like the, the center point of focus around thousands of men and, you know, hundreds of horses. All right. So this each little section of the army had its own elephant. All right. Let's see. Uh, helmets of brass on their heads. And besides this, for every beast were ordained 500 horsemen of the best. All right. These were ready at every occasion. Wheresoever the beast was, and whithersoever the beast went, they went also. Neither departed they from him. You see that right there? So even to get to the elephant, you got to fight through hundreds of, of men, right? And upon the beast were they strong towers of wood, which covered every one of them, and were girt fast unto them with devices. There were also upon every one two uh, and thirty. Okay, yeah. There were also upon them, excuse me, there were also upon every one, two and 30 strong men, 32 strong men that fought upon them beside the Indian that ruled them, right? That's where they got the elephants from was India, right? So each elephant had a, a like trainer, all right? Handler, if that's what you want to call it. All right. As for the remnant of the horsemen, they set them on this side and that side at the two parts of the host, giving them signs what to do and being harnessed all over amidst the ranks. Now, when the sun shone upon the shields of gold and brass, the mountains glistered therewith and shined like lamps of fire. So part of the king's army being spread upon the high mountains and part on the valleys below, they marched on safely and in order. You see that right there? So they had a... Uh, it was a sight to behold. I'll put it like that. It was a sight to behold. All, the, all these men, thousands and thousands and thousands of men coming to battle against Bethsura. All right. Wherefore, all that heard the noise of the multitude and the marching of the company and the rattling of the harness were moved, for the army was very great and mighty. Then Judas and his host drew near and entered into battle. And there were slain of the king's army 600 men, Eliezer also named Savaron, uh, also Avaron, same thing, perceiving that one of the beasts armed with royal harness was higher than all the rest, and supposing that the king was upon him, put himself in jeopardy. To the end, he might deliver his people and get him a perpetual name. You see that right there? So Eliezer 
is is scouting the army he's 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 ta- he's not looking at the army and getting fearful the way that that some might Eleazar is looking at the army and saying okay that's the squad over here this is how we need to approach them this is the, this is uh this platoon right here this is how we need to approach them oh the king's riding that elephant all right so he he's he's doing reconnaissance all right um let's say perpetual name where did i just read that okay wherefore he ran upon him courageously through the midst of the battle slaying on the right hand and on the left so that they were divided from him on both sides you see that right there so eleazar saw and, and knew he said if i take out the elephant that has the king on it the battle's over we win so he he's going down through there fighting on the left side on the right slicing and dicing these men just trying to get to that elephant that has the uh that has the king on it all right um which done right uh divided from him on both sides which done he crept under the elephant and thrust him under and slew him whereupon the elephant fell down upon him and there he died all right because i mean an elephant fell down on him like what what do you what do you expect um, and there he died. Howbeit the rest of the Jews, seeing the strength of the king and the violence of his forces, turned away from them. Then the king's army went up to Jerusalem to meet them, and the king pitched his tents against Judea and against Mount Zion. But with them that were in Bethsura he made peace, for they came out of the city, because they had no victuals there to endure the siege, it being a year of rest to, uh, to the land, right? So it was a land Sabbath. They, they weren't growing crops. And now they done spent all their vittles uh, in this siege. All right. So the king took Bethsura and set a garrison there to keep it. Right. So unfortunately, Eleazar did not kill the king whenever he uh, attacked his elephant. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We, we still uh, remember him boldly because he took that chance to, uh, to fight for the people. As for the sanctuary, he besieged it many days and set their artillery with engines and instruments to cast fire and stones and pieces to cast darts and slings. Whereupon they also made engines against their engines and held them battle a long season. Yet at the last, their vessels being without victuals, for that it was the seventh year, and they in Judea that were delivered from the Gentiles had eaten up in the residue of the store, there were but a few left in the sanctuary because the famine did so prevail against them that they were fain to disperse themselves every man to his own place at that time lysias heard say that philip whom antiochus the king while he lived had appointed to bring up his son antiochus that he might be king was returned out of persia and media and media and the king's host also that went with him and that he sought to take unto him the ruling of the affairs wherefore he went in all haste and said to the king and the captains of the host and the company we decay daily and our victuals are but small and the place we lay siege unto is strong and the affairs and the affairs of the kingdom lie upon us right so they they they're spending too much time and resources fighting the jews all right as opposed to trying to uphold their own kingdom all right they're uh as we read in the uh in in second maccabees they're fueled by their hatred all right they're they're not fueled by anything logical or reasonable all right let's see let's see and the affairs of the kingdom lie upon us now therefore let us be friends with these men and make peace with them and with all their nation and covenant with them that means make an agreement that they shall live after their laws as they did before for they are therefore displeased and have done all these things because we abolished their laws so the king and the princes were content wherefore he sent unto them to make peace and they accepted thereof also the king and the princes made an oath but un- excuse me also the king and the princes made an oath unto them whereupon they went out of the stronghold then the king entered into Mount Zion, but when he saw the strength of the place, he broke his oath that he had made and gave commandment to pull down the wall round about, afterward departed in all haste and returned unto Antiochia, where he found Philip to be master of the city, so he fought against him and took the city by force. You see that right there? So you see Philip and uh, 
you know you have Lysias with uh... okay no you have Philip with Antiochus and then you have Lysias all right so um you have these different sects of the Greeks fighting against each other all right so with that we have the uh we're gonna we're gonna stop in in, in first Maccabees we're gonna keep reading in second Maccabees though second Maccabees chapter uh 12 because we uh just read a, we we're, we're caught up on on both ends essentially the the covenants the agreements were agreed to be made and and uh in first Maccabees chapter six and we're gonna uh hold there while we keep going in second Maccabees chapter 12. When these covenants were made, Lysias went unto the king, and the Jews were about their husbandry. But of the governors, excuse me, but of the governors of several places, Timotheus and Apollonius, the son of, uh, what did I say, Gineas, also, excuse me with these Greek names, I get outlandish, uh, Hieronymus, and uh, Demophon, Demophon, and beside them Nicanor, the governor of Cyprus would not suffer them to be quiet and live in peace, right? So even though the, the agreements were made, you have these people moved by their hatred, still want to come against the Jews. The men of Joppa, uh, Joppa also did such an ungodly deed. They prayed the Jews that dwelt among them to go on, excuse me, to go with their wives and children into the boats which they had prepared as though had as though they had meant them no hurt. Who accepted of it? They were like, hey, you want some free boats? They're like, sure, we'll take a free boat. Who accepted of it according to the common degree of the city as being desirous to live in peace and suspecting nothing. But when they were gone forth into the deep, they drowned no less than 200 of them. You see that right there? So they took them out to sea and just threw them out in the sea. They drowned 200. When Judas heard of this cruelty done unto his countrymen, he commanded those that were with him to make them ready. And calling upon God, the righteous judge, he came against those murderers of his brethren and burnt the haven by night and set the boats on fire. And those that fled thither, he slew. You see that right there? So those people in Joppa causing their terrorism, Judas Maccabeus said, no, we ain't having that. Went and got vengeance. And when the town was shut up, he went backward as if he would return to root out all them of the city of Joppa but when he heard that the Jamnites were minded to do in like manner unto the Jews that dwelt among them uh, that were Jamnites in uh, Jamnia um, I don't know specifically again the, these the Greeks changed the names of the cities or at least the people in the time of the Greeks changed the names of the cities so the, the older type maps that I have don't really work um or for this era, I should say. Um, he came upon the Jamnites also by night and set fire on the haven and the navy so that the light of the fire was seen at Jerusalem 240 furlongs off. And a furlong is like similar to a kilometer or a mile. Like that's what a furlong is. Um, but uh, Jamnia, as we can see, is a coastal city. So it is similar to where Joppa is, I presume. Uh, and just so, you know, we got some context, I, I will at least try to look for Jamni. I don't think it's going to be on here, though. I know Joppa is on one of these. Where, uh, where I like you. I like using this one. It's got a lot of different cities on this one. As you can see, Joppa is right here. So Jamni is probably uh, somewhere south, if I had to guess. Still on the coast, though. All right. Um, now, when they were gone from thence, nine furlongs in their journey toward Timotheus, no fewer than 5,000 men on foot and 500 horsemen of the Arabians set upon him. You see that right there? So everybody's coming against uh, the Maccabean family and the Jews. Everybody's coming against them on every side. 
You got the Greeks over here. You got the Idumians over here. You got the Arabians over here. You got the people that was living in uh, Joppa at that time, probably Philistines, maybe Greeks. It's like everywhere, everywhere you turn. Enemies on every side. Whereupon there was a very sore battle, but Judas side, by the help of God, got the victory, so that the nomads of Arabia, being overcome, besought Judas for peace, promising both to give him cattle and to pleasure him otherwise. They said, look, we'll do whatever you want. Just leave us alone. Just, <laughs> we're sorry. We'll give you whatever you want. Then Judas, thinking indeed that they would be profitable in many things, granted them peace, whereupon they shook hands, and so they departed to their tents. He, also, he went also about to make a bridge to a certain strong city, which was fenced about with walls and inhabited by people of diverse countries. And the name of it was Caspis. And I don't know where Caspis is. I'm not even going to lie to you. But they that were within it put such trust in the strength of the walls and provision of victuals that they behaved themselves rudely toward them that were with Judas, railing and blaspheming and uttering such words as were not to be spoken. Right. So uh, we read about that in the last chapter as well here in Second Maccabees about the blasphemies. Man, people are so cocky and arrogant when there's a city wall up. You know what I'm saying? When they're in a high tower and you're on the ground. Wherefore Judas, with his company, calling upon the great Lord of the world, who without rams or engines of war, did cast down Jericho in the time of Joshua, gave a fierce assault against the walls, and took the city by the will of God, and made unspeakable slaughters, insomuch that a lake two hundred furlongs broad, or excuse me, a lake two furlongs broad, near adjoining thereto, being filled full, was seen running with blood. You see that right there? So they said, look, blood was in the streets. That's how bad the slaughter was there. That they put upon them blasphemous people, man. Blood was running the streets, what they said. Then departed they from thence 750 furlongs and came to Charaka unto the Jews that are called, to the Jews that are called to be any. And there's a lot of, lot of historical context that I am just, that, that goes beyond Bible history 101. We'll put it like that. It goes into, uh, Maybe 102, maybe 201. But as for Timotheus, they found him not in the places. For before he had dispatched anything, he departed from thence, having left a very strong garrison into a certain, in a certain hold. You see that right there? So he would, uh, Timotheus is on the run. All right. He knows that if uh, Judas catches up with him, he going to die. So uh, he's, uh, as he's going, he's setting up these garrisons. He's setting up these uh, fortresses and then leaving fortifying these cities and then leaving and Maccabeus ranged his army by bands and set them over the bands and went against Timotheus who had about him a hundred and twenty thousand men of foot and two thousand and five hundred horsemen right so you had a uh, dang a hundred and twenty thousand footmen and twenty five hundred horsemen insane insane amount of people but you know as, as I've, I've been uh saying judas maccabeus knows how to okay you are the leader of this troop y'all go this way you're the leader of this section y'all go this way i'll lead this section we'll go this way like he, he knows how to designate the leadership roles all right and obviously uh faith is the most important thing that they have here they know that god will always fight for them if they fight for God now when Timotheus had knowledge of Judas coming he sent the women and children and the other baggage unto a fortress called uh, Carnion Carnion? yeah Carnion that's crazy and the other baggage for the town was hard to besiege and uneasy to come unto by reason of the straightness of all the places all right, so he, he, he sent the, the women and children and the um, basically all their stuff to, to Carnion. But when Judas, excuse me, but when Judas's first band came in sight, the enemies being smitten with fear and terror through the appearing of him who seeth all things fled amain. 
one running into this way, another that way, so as that they were often hurt of their own men and wounded with the points of their own swords. You see that right there? So that's uh, what we call these days friendly fire. They were running so sporadically and, and, and with so much fear, they weren't paying attention to what they were doing. And there was a lot of friendly fire uh, on the side of Timotheus. Judas also was very earnest in pursuing them, killing those wicked wretches of whom he slew about 30,000 men. Moreover, Timotheus himself fell into the hands of Dositheus and Sosipater, whom he besought with much craft to let him go with his life, because he had many of the Jews' parents and the brethren of some of them who, if they put him to death, should not be regarded. They said, look, if y'all kill me, I got all your hostages and I'll make sure that they die. All right. So when he had assured them with many words that he would restore them without hurt, according to the agreement, they let him go for the saving of their brethren. Then Maccabeus marched forth to Carnian and to the temple of Atargatis, Atargatis. And there he slew five and 20,000 persons. So 25,000 people in Carnian. And after he had put to flight and destroyed them, Judas removed the host toward Ephron, a strong city, wherein Lysias abode, and a great multitude of diverse nations. And the strong young men kept the walls and defended them mightily, wherein also was a great provision of engines and darts. But when Judas and his company had called upon Almighty God, who with his power breaketh the strength of his enemies, they won the city and slew 25,000 of them that were within in uh, Ephron. All right. And there was a, a lot of, uh, there was like a military warehouse there. Had a lot of engines and darts there. Engine being a battering ram and uh, darts being arrows, if, if, if you were not familiar. From thence they departed to uh, Stopolis, Scythopolis, which lieth 600 furlongs from Jerusalem. But when the Jews that dwelt there had testified that the uh, Scythopol, the people in Scythopolis, dealt lovingly with them and entreated them kindly in the time of their adversity they gave them thanks desiring them to be friendly still unto them and so they came to jerusalem the feast of weeks approaching you see that right there so they said look we're going to stop by uh Scythopolis because they've always been kind to us and then we're going to keep the pentecost in jerusalem all right so uh, uh, judas was not judas maccabeus was not this you know like bloodthirsty like uh evil wicked guy he he was a warrior for the lord so he loved you if you loved him if you showed love to him and his people he loved you but he's the the worst enemy you could ever have if you didn't love him and his people all right um feast of weeks approaching and after the feast called pentecost they went forth against gorgias the governor of idumia who came out with 3,000 men of foot and 400 horsemen. And it happened that in their fighting together, a few of the Jews were slain, at which time Dositheus, one of uh, Basiner's, uh, Bachiner, Basiner's company, who was on horseback and a strong man was still upon Gorgias and taking hold of his coat, drew him by force and when he would have taken that cursed man alive a horseman of Thracia coming upon him smote off his shoulder so that Gorgias fled unto Marissa he said it right there so um saved by the skin of his teeth some may say oh, uh, oh Gorgias there fled into Marissa and when they that were with Gorgias had fought, had fought long and were weary, Judas called upon the Lord that he would show himself to be their helper and leader of the battle. And with that, he began in his own language and sung psalms with a loud voice and rushing unawares upon Gorgias' men, he put them to flight. And see, uh, singing the psalms in this case, Y'all got to read some of the Psalms, man, like Psalms 137 or Psalms 149. Those would be great in a battle. All right. Those, those would be uh, mighty. All right. You, you, you think he's saying the Lord is my shepherd. I cannot want. Nah, maybe, maybe he said that it didn't say which Psalms, 
But uh, in Psalm 149, it talks about executing the vengeance of the Lord. So, uh, yeah, singing them psalms. Y'all got to read the psalms and y'all see what I'm talking about. He said, sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. That's Psalms 110. All right. Of course, that's talking about Christ. But Judas Maccabeus is fighting these battles in the spirit of Christ. Christ sending the angels to help out Judas Maccabeus. All right. Uh, sang the Psalms. He put them to flight. So Judas gathered his host and came into the city of Adullam. And when, he, and when the seventh day came, they purified themselves as the custom was and kept the Sabbath in the same place. And upon the day following, as the use had been, Judas and his company came to take up the borders of them that were slain and to bury them with their kinsmen in their father's graves. You see that right there? So uh, again, it's not just about fighting. It's not just about being, you know, bloodthirsty against these heathen. He's helping the people. That's the whole reason why he's doing this is to help the people. Now, under the coats of everyone that was slain, they found things consecrated to the idols of the Jamnites, which is forbidden, the, uh, which is forbidden in the Jews, oh, excuse me, which is forbidden the Jews by the law. I was trying to work out the grammar of that one. Then every man saw that this was the cause wherefore they were slain. You see that right there? So they said, oh, okay. They, they did like Achan, if y'all remember Joshua. Uh, chapter 7 talks about Achan grabbing a Babylonian garment and some gold when God told him not to take anything of that cursed city Jericho um, so again that's the, that's the reason why these men died in that battle those few men that died is because they had stolen idols that they were probably going to sell in, on the black market or whatever and make a little extra money um, God, God don't play with that stuff man God don't play with that stuff it doesn't matter why you got it God's not dealing with that stuff. All men, therefore, praising the Lord, the righteous judge, who had opened the things that were hid, because all things done in the dark will be brought to light, betook themselves unto prayer and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of remembrance. Besides that, noble Judas exhorted the people to keep themselves from sin, for so much as they saw before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sins of those that were slain. He said that right there. He said, look, this is what happens to you when you sin. You die. So don't sin, and the Lord will keep us alive as we're fighting his battles. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 drams of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly in that he was mindful of the resurrection. For if he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. You see that right there? So even uh, before Christ stepped on the scene, the people understood about the resurrection of the dead all right they understood about how you know they may get to live again so we'll pray for them maybe they'll get to live again all right and that's all i'll say on that and also in that he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died godly it was a holy and good thought whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead that they might be delivered from sin it was a good thought it was a good thought 